welcome to the series of this blockchain lectures now due to this covid pandemic period we do not wish to delay the course more so i'll be recording it on a screen saver technology uh, the videos would be as good it would be as informative but uh, like you can say it means they would not be so much fancy but the information would be there and it would be at par as with swam and other international universities to learn the concepts we have already seen what blockchain is by means of a story and certain definitions of how blockchain is defined by different technical experts but to move ahead we need to see some very important concepts of blockchain so let us continue with the lectures of first week and i am calling it blockchain essentials so what is there in this blockchain essentials in the store for you is these are some of the brain teasers what is centralized computing what is decentralized what do we mean by distributed what is this public private consortium blockchain and at the end what is this consensus mechanism so in this series of videos we will be focusing on these three concept what is centralized decentralized distributed computing in the first video which is this video i'll be focusing on the meaning of centralized decentralized and distributed these three terms are often used whenever we talk about blockchain and i have found students always confused what is centralized what is decentralized what is distributed sometimes we call blockchain as a decentralized computing sometimes we call it as a distributed computing so after this watching this video your concept of that what is the difference between these three terminologies and why do we call blockchain as a decentralized distributed computing or when it becomes decentralized when it becomes distributed it will be very much clear to you all so let's begin our journey for these three networks these are our three type of networks centralized decentralized and distributed so to understand these three type of networks as we see on this figure centralized computing decentralized computing and distributed computing watching closely in the centralized computing we can see that in centralized computing there is a central node we can call it a central server or a central system all other nodes are connected to this centralized node if anything goes wrong with this centralized node everything vanishes so this central node is the key point in centralized computing if we see closely to the next figure that is decentralized there are more than one centralized server there are many centralized server still the word centralized but more than one centralized you see this node is centralized for the connecting nodes similarly this node is centralized similarly this node is centralized similarly this node is centralized server this node is centralized server so there are many centralized server which are connected with each other but the nodes are not interacting with each other whereas in the third figure if we see this is distributed what is happening the nodes are connected with their peer nodes zyada achhi dosti hai in logon mein अपने पीयर नोट्स के साथ कनेक्शन है इनका अपने पड़ोसियों के साथ कनेक्शन है सिर्फ फैमिली के हेड्स में ही नहीं पड़ोसियों के साथ कनेक्शन हैं बच्चों में आपस में कनेक्शन है दैट इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड फिगर सो लेट अस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड डेट अगेन विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ स्टोरी द स्टोरी इज वी हैव ऑल हर्ड अबाउट अ स्टोरी दैट अ मैन हैड फाइव चिल्ड्रेन ही ब्रॉट फाइव स्टेक्स एंड ही सेट try to break them individually they were able to break them but when kept together the children were not 
एबल टू ब्रेक दैन सो ही सेट दैट एकता में शक्ति है ना यूनिटी इज द स्ट्रेंथ सो वी ट्विस दिस स्टोरी नाउ द सेम मैन ही बायस टेन स्टिक्स एंड ही कीप्स द राइट टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट दो टेन स्टिक्स टू हिमसेल्फ ही कीप्स द टेन स्टिक्स विद हिम एंड ही डिसाइड्स दैट हु विल बी गिवन विच स्टिक एंड हु सो एवर इज इज सन और डॉटर दे डिपेंड ऑन देयर father that man to take that stick the sole decision is is of that old person who has purchased those ten sticks so though those ten sticks are united definitely they are united and they are easy to access because a child can go to his father and he can ask that please give that but the decision depends upon the father that whether he will give to him or whether he will not give if he is busy he can say you keep on waiting i'll give you after some time i will not process your results i will delay your results so this is what a centralized computing is where the decision is in one person all the sticks are binded together definitely they are united but if anything goes wrong with the decision of the father if anything goes wrong with the, with that person all the sticks are gone so that is the disadvantage of centralized computing in decentralized computing what does this man do this man give responsibilities to his four elder son that instead of me now you all four, four elder sons have equal rights of these sticks have equal copies of these sticks and you can use them you can distribute them you can process the request of your younger children younger brothers and sisters that who needs the stick what is their request so in this case instead of one person he has distributed he has decentralized his resources he has decentralized his power we can say he has decentralized his power to four different sub so that is decentralized computing where instead of one person there are four different person those who are having the rights to control but that is in the same geographical location it he has distributed it but in the same geographical location and these four persons can interact with each other that is decentralized computing still rights are not given to each son in distributed computing the man says that each one of you are equal owners you have got equal opportunity to access all of you are having your own individual sticks and access to the common platform and all of you can communicate with each other directly and take the decision so in this case it is distributed computing where the decision is distributed among the parties everyone is having an equal opportunity to interact everyone has have a equal stake that is basically what a distributed computing is not seeing these things more in technical terms let's take the screen further and see how, how these three terms can be more technically explained in a more better way so having said all this let's focus on what is centralized computing so the definition of centralized computing which i believe is the best thing is all the systems are connected to a central computer or a server jitne bhi systems hain jitne bhi nodes hain they are connected to the central computer now in this case a single owner is having the full control of the system if we talk about the ownership a single owner a single man a single system is having the control of all the files if we talk of technical terms all the files are residing in the single computer all the work is done by the single server if that single server goes wrong everything goes wrong so the single server is more prone to attacks if we talk about an organization so where an organization is controlled by a single man you can say that that type of organization is a centralized organization that is a centralized power when we talk about networks then this is a centralized computing where there is a single server in blockchain when we deal about things sometimes it comes that google is a centralized computing so google is not centralized computing google is having a centralized ownership the owner of the google can decide what to do if there are multiple stakeholders then we will say that the owner of the google is decentralized ownership is there in terms of technical terms google is not centralized computing 
okay the google search engine but sometimes we find it is written that google is having a centralized power so power means controlling single owner so do not get confused with the terminology whether we are speaking in terms of network whether it is being told in terms of ownership third party involvement is present in centralized computing how does what do you mean by third party suppose me and you have to interact with each other so this third party involvement is their swam platform where you are accessing this so if something goes wrong with the swam platform you cannot access it so this is third party involvement is there in centralized computing okay so that is the meaning of third party involvement is there definitely it is easy to implement implement it does not require large amount of cost in terms of technical terms to build a centralized computing is more easy if i wish to increase the capacity of centralized computing i cannot put more than one server in it because it is centralized there is only one server which is allowed but i can increase the capacity of that server i can put more number of hard disk i can put more number of processor in that centralized server but it also has a limit so vertical scaling is possible but with a limit if we talk about the basic architecture it is a client server architecture so to sum up centralized computing is where the owner is one it is having a single control if we talk about in terms of network there is a single server which is connected by different nodes and it is up to the server to take the decision to process the request or not it sometimes leads to denial of service attack this denial of service attack is there in centralized computing because if my server is busy and if i do not wish i can deny the service so that is a denial of service attack which client server architecture is prone to this most of the companies most of the organizations most of the platforms even today run on centralized server architecture client server architecture but there are others those who have shifted to decentralized computing so let us see what is a decentralized network as we have already seen in the network there are multiple central servers hain abhi bhi central unke sath bahut sare connected hain but there are more than one central server so that is known as a multiple central server there is no single owner more than one owner is there to decide so there is no single point of failure if a node wants to communicate with his server and that server goes down then he can send the request to another server that is known as decentralized computing that is known as decentralized computing when we make a request to the facebook so do we hope that facebook is keeping only one server there are many servers so that is decentralized computing but if we talk about the ownership so there is one single owner of facebook so ownership of facebook is centralized but the technology if we talk about it is decentralized because when we are sending the request it is going to multiple servers and the server which can take the request process our request data is replicated on different servers in decentralized computing we say data is replicated on different central servers user can access data from one server if one fails so the important point in decentralized computing is there is no single control when there is no single control it means that it is decentralized remember that when there is no single control control is divided we come to decentralized now let's focus on the third terminology that is distributed computing i say distributed computing in my own words where i say that all nodes are masters all nodes have got full access they have got full powers and they have the deciding factors without the majority of the nodes deciding no decision can be taken that is the distributed computing which is the future of technology and which is the future of any organization if we talk about business also then distributed power is something which is going to survive there is no control of anyone all have equal rights that is democracy computation is distributed across components the computation which has to be done in centralized computing everything was done by the central server in decentralized serving there was different decent, different servers doing the same work in distributed the work is divided into different nodes and they are collaborating with each other see each node interact with each other by message passing they are passing messages to each other and taking the decision 
it is known as a peer to peer network where the peers are connecting with each other this is what the scenario is this is what which is required and key point to just differentiate between decentralized and distributed this is my belief that in distributed computing we say that servers are geographically distributed they are not located at a same location so they are geographically distributed around the globe so that is known as a distributed computing where the location is not the limit in decentralized computing we say that there are different center servers at the same place in distributed computing says we says that they are distributed at different location that is a distributed computing suppose let us take understand this with another example so let's go back to our slides let us understand this with another example the example is that suppose there is an election a prime minister is being nominated and he says that there is no cm all the decisions will be taken by individually by the prime minister that is a centralized computing centralized power all the decisions are being taken by the prime minister and he says no each state will be having his own prime minister each state will be having his own chief minister to be more specific and he is free to take the decision that is decentralized computing third scenario if i if we say no all the human beings living in the state they will decide what they want for every thing a major decision what ever has to be implemented all the human beings all the stakeholders will decide and they will vote whether this thing has to be done or not this is distributed computing so this is something which is going to come and which is going to survive so after this video i hope that the concept of centralized decentralized and distributed is clear and in the next video we'll be sharing about public private and protected blockchain thank you